Screencast here is going to cover Chapter 4, Lesson 2 only. We've um, got a couple things we're going to do, and it all deals with um, how to lay things out and how to select things correctly in InDesign. This is what we're going to end up with. Um, we're going to look at how to select objects on this type of document. Do a command O to open and open up 4-4 from your data files and save it as stack and layer in your classwork folder. Stack and layer. So we're going to we're going to discuss how to move things on the actual document and how to layer them up. It's kind of a throwback to PowerPoint if you did any of this in PowerPoint. We've done a little bit of this, but this is just a little bit more uh, in depth. Let's go ahead and select the, the yellow rectangle. When I click on the yellow rectangle, uh, I can right click it and go to arrange and say bring forward. If I bring it forward, it puts it one shape closer to your viewing as the first thing that you would see. Another way of doing that is to go up to object on the menu and go to arrange, and let's do this one, bring forward again. It then steps it to the front of the actual document. Let's try it. Let's uh, try a couple other ones here. Let's go to the green square, and let's. I know. Let's do the. Let's do the blue circle and the yellow rectangle. Let's select both of them. So I'm going to click on the blue circle first. Hold Shift. Click on the yellow rectangle. And let's go Object, Arrange, and let's send it uh, backward one. Then takes both objects. If I grab my selection tool and take the green circle and I move it, it's on top of both both of those objects. Uh, let's go ahead and select the entire document. So Command A or just a uh, uh, or just a drag to select all. And let's open up our alignment panel and let's align our horizontal centers. So on the align objects, let's click horizontal centers. So I now have objects covering objects. I have my green circle on top, then I have my, well, I don't know, I don't know if I have my, my yellow um, rectangle or if I have my blue circle first. So I'm gonna click to deselect. Here's a couple of ways of how we can select things that are behind. Click on the green circle. Hold down command and then click the center of the green circle again. You now selected the item behind the green circle by holding command and clicking. If I hold command and click again, I select the next object that is furthest from my view. So right now, my blue circle is in layer three. So with that blue circle selected, which I have now, I'm gonna go to object on the menu, arrange, and I'm gonna say, bring it to the front. So I don't have to move everything out of the way to go grab it. I can just hold command and click. Let's try it. With the blue circle selected, hold command and click once to select the green circle, once again to select the yellow rectangle, and once again to select the red square at the back. Multiple ways you can select things. Let's do command O to open and let's open up 4-5 from your data files and let's save this one in our classwork folder as layers intro. So now we're going to be looking at layers uh, kind of in regards to Photoshop and how we can get these to actually look similar. Now that's similar to Photoshop, but it's actually quite a bit different. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and look at what you have. You've got some text, you've got several pictures, and then you've got green objects that are providing color in the background. But notice that you do have this white that's in the background and you've got a little white, white tab here on the top uh, left, uh, top right and the bottom left. What we're gonna do is we're actually going to make this object here and we're gonna do a lot of it in the layers palette. So go ahead and open up the layers palette on your panel and notice that you have one layer. If I click the drop down arrow, you've got all these documents, you know a lot of them are PSDs, there are there are some that are labeled with the text, like this is actually the text for that, uh, that uh, Cornegilla, that's actually the text that's on the page. I'm going to come back up to layer one. I'm going to collapse it with that triangle. This is similar to Photoshop. Uh, that's one layer with multiple objects on one layer. So we, this whole thing was designed on just one layer. But we can select individual things still. It's not like Photoshop where it seals it up on one layer. 
Let's click this little uh, little create new layer icon here, and let's create a new layer. Notice it shows layer two, and it puts it as red, and it's got its own little drop down. Let's double click layer two, and let's change this one, the name of it. Um, let's call this one. Let's call it text. Text, and I'm gonna have text as purple, which is down kind of towards the bottom. Text to purple. I'm gonna come back to layer one, which is currently blue. I'm gonna double click it, and I'm gonna call this one, uh, let's call this one, tints, tints. And let's make one more layer. And so this one popped up, it was red as layer three. I'm gonna double click it. Let's call this one, images. And I'm gonna make images orange. Okay, so now what we can do is we can we can move layers around, we can shift them, we can reorganize how things are looked, and whatever's at the top is going to appear first on your document, just like Photoshop does. Now, our original layer that we had to work with which was uh, was tints. So if you open up tints, what we're going to do is we're going to move some of these things. So there's there's uh, there's there's some ways we can do that. Here's one way of moving it. Let's come into the document. Let's make sure we're on our selection tool. While we're on our selection tool, let's go ahead and click on the picture, the large picture here. I'm going to hold shift. And I'm going to click on the five tiled images in the bottom and the one small image over in the texture on the left. So I have, let's see, five. So I have seven images selected. Okay. If I come up here to my tints drop down, everything that has a little blue square out to the side is selected. And this is how I can actually move things. So I'm going to collapse that again. So the only reason this is blue out here is saying something in the tints is selected. And if I go into the tints, I can see that I have something selected and some things not. So what I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to click and hold on this little blue dot and I'm going to drag and drop it on top of the images dot. When I let go and open it up, I can see that I now have pictures inside the images layer. And if I go back to tense, I can see it, it's a lot smaller than it was. So that's one way we can move things. I'm gonna to click to deselect. Let's come in here to the left side, and let's select uh, Cornegilla. Let's hold shift, let's select Thursday, August, 4, August 11th, and let's select the text box on the left and the text box on the right. So we have one, two, three, four text boxes selected. If I look at the tense layer, I can see something is selected in there, and I know that if I expand it, I've got one, two, three, I've got four text layers selected. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and hold and drop it on top of the text layer, and if I flip this open, I can see I've got four things there. Now, if you take tints and move tints on top of images, things disappear, and the only reason that is it's not that they were deleted, it's that all of the images are underneath the tense layer right now. If I take um, images and move it underneath text, nothing changes because there's no text that's actually covering a picture. If I take tense and move it all the way back down to the bottom again, then everything appears on top of it. Let's go ahead and click the eyeball on text and images. What that does is that just removes things from, from view so I can get a clean look. So what I'd want to do here is I want to make my backdrop and then I want to add things on top of it. So let's add something on top of this, this layer here. So I'm going to make sure I'm on the tense layer. I'm going to come over here to my rectangle tool and I'm going to, I'm just going to drop a little, let me hit cancel there. Go ahead and turn all the layers back on. It might work better if we just have all the layers turned on. Okay, with all the layers turned on, let's go to our rectangle tool and let's drop a little rectangle on. I'm on the tints layer here. I'm gonna drop a little rectangle on there and I'm gonna go up to my fill color and select tan, which is at the bottom. I'm gonna change the stroke to none. I'm gonna change the stroke to none. Now you can see if I move that around, if it's on top of the image, 
I'll just kind of put that out here. If it's on top of this image, actually it's putting it behind it. So if I open up the tints, I can see that rectangle is added to the tints layer. Now I'm going to go ahead and click the eyeball on images and the eyeball on text. So now I can actually get to this, uh, this, this rectangle here. So I'm going to put this rectangle in the top left hand corner. I'm going to use my, um, I'm actually going to use my reference point, my top left reference point. Put that at zero, zero. And I'm going to make the width of this box. Oh, let's see. I think that's about 12 and a half inches is the document. Yeah, 12 and a half by, mm, looks like, let's try five inches in our height. Yeah, five inches is good. Now it's on top of, <laughs> Now it's actually on top of everything. I don't want it to be, but what we just did with all those shapes in the previous document was work on layering. For example, if I look up here, I can see that rectangle was selected. It's at the top of it. If I click on hold on rectangle and move it down, it now appears underneath everything. So there's, there's a couple things you have to understand. One, you have layers and inside layers, you have objects that could be on top of or underneath. Now, if I go ahead and collapse tense here and add images and add text back on, I may actually need to uh, move my rectangle. I think five inches is probably too big. It should line up underneath the green. So I can add things layering inside one layer by using those arrangement tools, which we did in the previous document. And we can still name things like we did as well. Now, if I wanted things not to move and never be touched again, what I can do is I can come up to the images and I can click the lock button and that will lock those images in there. That's probably pretty good for your layout. Once you have your layout set, you'd want to lock it so nobody can come in and actually uh, mess it up. That's going to conclude 4-2.